Hello chess fans, this is Rick from Chess to Impress with a video on Magnus Carlsen's favorite game from Bobby Fischer. I hope you like my videos and if you do it would be great if you would subscribe to my Chess to Impress channel. That would be wonderful. When Magnus Carlsen was asked in one of the press conferences at the 2016 World Championship about his favorite Fischer game, he answered the game against Sadie from the 1964 US Championships where he wins with a knight versus a bishop. Fischer had already won the tournament before this game started. He had an incredible 10 out of 10 score by that point. And should he win the last round game, then Fischer would achieve something that no other American player had ever done before or since, which is winning the US Championship with a perfect 11 out of 11 score. Sadie was in running for second place and had no intention of becoming another Fischer victim. The tournament was held in the ballroom of the Henry Hudson Hotel in New York. Let's look at the game. It was played on the 2nd of January 1964. White is Anthony Sadie, black is Bobby Fischer. And this is the position after 26, h7, h5 from Fischer. It's an end game. Both players have six pawns. White has a bishop, black has a knight, and black is slightly better here. And the reason for that is the pawn on d4. It's on a dark square, and the bishop is of the dark square, so the pawn is in the way of the bishop. The bishop cannot display its full range. The knight can jump around and cause white problems. Still, objectively, this game should be a draw, but in a practical game, it's more difficult. And of course, black was the stronger player. Bishop e3, king h7, f3, king g6. Fischer's bringing his king closer to the action. a4. Sadie waits. He is avoiding the sharp g4 in order not to have to find a narrow path to salvation. And Gary Kasparov is analyzing this game in his book My Great Predecessors and gives endless variations here. This is the 29th move and his variations, his analysis goes up to move 46. And it might be very interesting for Magnus Carlsen stu to study all that. But for the purpose of this channel, that goes way too deep. So I will not give you those variations. King f5, king e2, g5, king f2, and now Fischer makes some waiting moves, probably to get closer to the time control. Knight d8, bishop d2, king back, king e3, knight back to e6, king d3, king f5. Black is not in a hurry, he wins some time, and there's nothing active white can do. Bishop e3, f6. King e2, king g6, making room for the f-pawn. King d3, f5, there comes the f-pawn. King e2, it's clear that white tries to gain a draw by marking time, avoiding any committing decisions. He claims to have a fortress here. f4, bishop f2, and now Fischer reroutes his knight. Knight g7, h3. Knight f5, king d3, and here comes the breakthrough. g4, take, take, and take, and knight h6 to win back the g4 pawn. Here the game got adjourned, and Sadie thought for 45 minutes and came up with the move bishop e1, which is not the best move in this position. That's the move he sealed in the envelope. He claimed later that he saw the line, which probably will gain him a draw. King e2, knight takes, bishop g1, king f5, king f3, knight f6, bishop h2, knight h5, a5, King g5, and now the very important move, g4. Black has to take, and white takes back, and this is a drawn endgame. What is very important is that white, 
who has two weaknesses. The weaknesses are on g2 and on d4, and that's one weakness too many. If he can solve one of those weaknesses, he should be able to comfortably hold a draw. And in this variation, which Sadie claimed he had seen, white solves the weakness on g2, and this now is a, an easy draw. But in the game, as we can see, Sadie does not succeed in swapping the g2 pawn for the f, f4 pawn. He is, keeps being stuck with two weaknesses, and that will cost him the game. When word got out that history could be in the making, a thousand spectators crowded the ballroom as the adjournment was played out. A number of tournament participants did not want to see Fischer win the tournament with a perfect score, and so they helped Sadie analyze the adjourned position. Let's see what happened when the game resumed. As I said, Bishop e1 was the adjourned, was the sealed move. Fischer took the pawn. Bishop d2. King f5. Bishop e1. White has to wait to see what happens. And now, with knight f6, Fischer starts to dance around with his knight. Bishop h4. Knight h5. Bishop e1. King g4. King e2, black can only wait, white can only wait. Knight g3 check, king back, taking the knight is not an option, that pawn and game is easily won for black. Knight f5, bishop f2, knight h4, and the knight dance has resulted in something concrete. Now the g2 pawn is lost. Again, taking the knight is not an option, because then the pawn end game is also an easy win for black. Sadie tried a5, knight takes g2, king c3, king f3, bishop g1, king e2. The black king has infiltrated. Bishop h2, f3, bishop g3, and now the most precise knight e3, which caused Sadie to resign. Black is going to play knight f5, and then the bishop has to leave the e1 h4 diagonal, and the f pawn will then promote. Fischer won the game, won the championship with 11 out of 11, and a $2,000 first prize. As Kasparov said, this was another example of irresistible Fischer pressure. Later, Grandmaster Larry Evans wrote, Bobby's 11-0 sweep of the 1963-1964 US Championship made a greater impact around the world than in America, where the general public was indifferent to chess. Baseball, football and basketball dominated the sports pages. Chess, when it received any, any notice at all, was lodged in the back between obituaries and comics. At the time, Bobby said bitterly, Around the world, I'm more famous than Joe Namath. In America, I'm nobody. Joe Namath was a famous American football player at the time. Victory seemed so effortless. Hans Kmoch quipped that Fischer won the exhibition, but Evans won the tournament. His competitors felt a bit humiliated, but I for one heeded Goethe's admonition that our, that our only defense against a genius is to admire him. Grandmaster Bent Larsen from Denmark was unimpressed. He was playing against children in the USA. All I know is that when they sit down to play Fischer, they play as though beaten before the game starts. The Russians say that Fischer is too limited and lacking in self-criticism, and that he is really not a serious problem as far as the World Championship is concerned. That was in 1964, and we all know that Eight years later, Bobby Fischer became the 11th world champion after single-handedly defeating the whole Russian-Soviet chess empire. Hope you enjoyed this video of Magnus Carlsen's most favorite Bobby Fischer game. If you did, please give it a thumbs up, please subscribe to my channel, and I'm looking forward to reading your comments. This is Rick from Chess to Impress. Thank you for watching.